take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here's Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. Let me say uh, Hotel for Varigani for my Kwanzaa uh, friends, Africana study students, and <laughs> classmates, contemporaries, colleagues, academics, and academics. And uh, let me say good morning. Uh, hello, how are you? Good afternoon, good evening, but certainly never good night and never ever goodbye because I'm traumatized by goodbyes. I said I'm traumatized by goodbyes. My name is the Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of uh, Los Angeles. And we're, uh, excuse me, fellowshipping and uh, uh, being hosted by our sister church, the Shiloh Missionary uh, Christian Church, which is pastored by my good friend, the Reverend Dr. Della F. Hollandus. And uh, we're having services tonight. We welcome you and invite you and encourage you uh, when you're in the area to come on by and worship with us, all right? Uh, that's New Life Institutional Baptist Church, uh, located at 8916 South Main Street. Don't pay any attention to the... Uh, uh, Google uh, 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 listing that still has us at another location because uh, we are now located at 8916 South Main Street and uh, we're being hosted as a, again by our sister church, the Shiloh Missionary Christian Church, which if you Google 8916, that's what's going to come up. Come on over. We're right there worshiping and having a great time uh, in the Lord. You'll be glad you did. Uh, services are generally on Friday nights, uh, 7 p.m., and then on Sunday mornings at Sunday school, 10 a.m., uh, morning worship uh, immediately after uh, Sunday school starts around about 11, 15, 11, 20, if they mess around and drink coffee, you understand, <laughs> and then our regular schedule of services that we have throughout the year, so please come by and uh, let the Lord uh, bless you. I'd like to see your face in the place, all right? This offering, uh, this presentation that you are now viewing is a social justice uh, uh, presentation, which we call It's Time Social Justice, which seeks to uh, bring equity and equality across the board, uh, especially in the dispensation of uh, uh, criminal justice, uh, uh, too many times we the uh, black man gets killed with a knife, but the white boy who was actually killed somebody with a knife gets arrested, as in this latest Idaho uh, case. Uh, the guy, uh, the police uh, stopped his car, and he was with his father. His father was in the passenger seat. The, the murder was in the driver's seat, and uh, the police arrested him without, without incident, well, whereas with a a uh, black man is just threatened that he might have a gun or suspicion that he might have a gun, but the outcome is entirely different. So that's not social, that's what social justice seeks to remedy. We seek to uh, get to a place of equality, not brutality, uh, not cruelty, but equality of, in, in, the, in the application of not only the criminal justice system, which is what we uh, uh, are time and again uh, brought up against, but in all aspects of, uh, of life. Uh, I'm sure you heard about the recent case cases in the real estate uh, industry where a black person was selling the house and someone told them, said, well, you better whitewash this house, which means they removed all the family pictures, all the family photos, removed everything that said that a black person black family lived here and they asked their white neighbors to come in and uh, be there when the appraiser arrived, arrived and uh, uh, the second appraisal was uh, $500,000 higher than the first appraisal simply by the uh, appraiser feeling that uh, this is a white man's house so white folks get appraised at higher value. That's where social justice needs to be done. And uh, uh, if, if, it's, if we need social justice to apply itself in any uh, aspect of these institutionalized racisms, it's certainly in uh, the housing industry, because systemically, 
uh, black people have been uh, rooted out, uh, denounced, held back, prohibited, uh, not allowed to uh, purchase where we wanted to purchase, uh, going all the way back uh, to the founding of this nation when we were considered only three-fifths of a person. And in many ways, that uh, that estimate is still uh, holding uh, true in the minds and the thinking and the subconscious of many of our so-called fellow Americans. And uh, that is why we talk about social justice, because until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream, as the scripture says, then uh, we're going to have these uh, microaggressions and uh, these uh, sometimes blatant uh, uh, applications or, or presentations of uh, rabid uh, inequality. Uh, racism, racist. Uh, you can go back, I can go back, but I won't take you back uh, to a case a few years ago. Uh, where well, a, a white fellow was robbing a target and the black fellow was in there eating but he was a social, he was security guard and he uh, disarmed the fellow and the fellow ran out and uh, by him having that fellow's gun when the police came around the corner bam automatically they shot him Who, because a black man with a gun is still a uh, suspect in the eyes of the nation and uh, these things ought not to be so. They kill the hero and let the criminal get away, in other words. So, uh, yes, that's why we need uh, social justice, why we cry out for uh, social justice. You go into the medical field, same thing. And uh, we, we uh, applaud the uh, medical attention that was given to Damar Hamlin, but of course he was a black man and a, a football player. And, uh, but what would a black woman uh, in the hospital, just pregnant, what is her, her uh, uh, treatment likely to be? Uh, they say black women are more, excuse me, they say when a black woman is pregnant, she's in the da most dangerous part of her life, no matter what hospital she's in, uh, because of the way that uh, the black woman is regarded. Uh, Serena Williams is a primary uh, example but, uh, that stands out, but all of those other women who are not Serena Williams, uh, likewise, uh, should get good uh, health care and good favorable outcomes of their pregnancies. And so uh, all of this makes us continue to march and cry out for uh, social justice. And uh, while we're on the subject of Damar Hamlin, uh, this very day, Friday, he called in to, he was, he was, his, he was, his, his, his tooth was removed, and he was able to uh, attend or buy a, a conference, video conference there in the hospital, uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, team meeting, and uh, he told, he was able to tell the fellas, I love you, and everybody shouted in there. And so we, we like to hear a good story. So that's a good story to start the year off with. And, uh, and I don't want you to think I'm always uh, uh, crying sour grapes, even though that seems to be what I get most of the time. But uh, in the case of uh, Damar Hamlin, we have good news for all of us uh, that he is uh, breathing on his own, uh, still in intensive care, but doing much better. Uh, naturally, the doctors want to run uh, enormous amounts of, of tests uh, on him to make sure that, uh, you know, he's fully functioning uh, neurologically. And then, of course, the cardiologists want to make sure that there was no damage uh, to his heart from uh, the uh, uh, blow that he took on in the uh, uh, Buffalo Bills Cincinnati uh, game on uh, Friday night, excuse me, on uh, this past Monday night. So we have a, uh, we had a very uh, tragic uh, beginning there Monday night with uh, DeMar being uh, collapsing on the field and uh, his, he, uh, his heart stopped beating. 
but uh, because of the doctors that were right there on the sidelines uh, that are provided by the NFL, I'm told, uh, they responded immediately and uh, recognized what the problem was and administered uh, CPR, and when they couldn't get the CPR, they brought the, the uh, defibrillator paddles, the AEDs as they call it, and uh, they were able to save his life right there on the football field this Monday night in front of all of us who were looking in, uh, and and his players, his, his, both teams, uh, and uh, so we, 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 we applaud that because that's a miracle. We we have come a long way because that boy, years ago, he would have died right there. Yes, uh, 10 years ago, he would have died. But we come a long way, and we just got to give God praise and give God glory and give God thanks. And uh, thanks for these doctors and uh, 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 medical technicians and all of these people that have uh, titles that I can't pronounce, but they do their job, you know, the cardiologists, the ophthalmologists, and all that type of retinue, and, uh, but they were there, and they, they worked, and they performed, and they saved uh, his life, and this day, that boy's talking, <laughs> getting better, hallelujah, that makes me want to shout, don't it make you? All right, now to some bad news, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to be the next speaker. Uh, he finally got uh, 214 votes on the, uh, I think, the 13th ballot. So when they come back tonight at 10 p.m. Uh, Washington time, which would be uh, Eastern time, and here on California on the West Coast, it'll be 7 o'clock, but there it will be 10 p.m., and uh, they will have another vote, and I'm I, I, I'm sure that he will uh, assume the speaker's chair. But that doesn't bode good well for the country, because remember, uh, Kevin McCarthy was one of the insurrectionists in the Capitol, in the House of Representatives, that re rejected and, and voted to refuse uh, the uh, the uh, vote count and. Uh, that they were supposed to uh, perform there uh, in the Capitol. He, in other words, he was a Trumpite. He was a election denier. And uh, he said the vote was rigged and not fair. He was, uh, in other words, he was one of those who lied, who accepted the big lie, and who fostered that big lie. And uh, he, along with uh, Ted Cruz and uh, uh, 139 others Republicans were uh, trying to uh, uh, delay or overturn the election, and uh, they were uh, <clears throat> uh, protesting against uh, Nancy Pelosi, who was the Speaker of the House at the time, uh, and they, they were throwing up all kind of procedural blocks in order to in order to block the uh, uh, certification of the election. Unfortunately, they were not successful in that and we saw their friends on the outside climbing up on the walls and the proud boys and the oath keepers and the QAnon and the Ku Klux Klan and all of those uh, of that ilk and uh, their sympathizers in the Secret Service, their sympathizers in the police departments and in the uh, National Guards and in the military and in the House of Representatives, Donald Trump being uh, chief sympathizer, because he was the one that negotiated, that was egging them on uh, in that uh, attempt to overthrow and, and keep the election from being uh, certified. Uh, the smooth transition of government, as they, they politely pronounce it, was, was being impeded, in other words. Uh, by these uh, thousands of people who descended upon uh, Washington, D.C. And remember, 139 of those people, those sympathizers uh, who, who, who denied the results of the election, who wanted to toss out the election, and would have, uh, if it had that way, uh, 
stopped the election and brought another slate of electors that they uh, had chosen, uh, if they had been successful, we would be in a terrible uh, condition. And they are not, and they're still in government. They have not gone away. Uh, it is a clear and present threat to our democracy uh, when Kevin uh, McCarthy assumes the speaker, excuse me, the uh, speaker of the House, House becomes House Speaker. Uh, we'll still be in trouble because uh, remember the the uh, Republicans have a slight majority. They have a 222 to uh, 212 majority in the House of Representatives. Uh, which means that they are going to be throwing their weight around. And uh, you can see how hard it is for them to even pick their own person. And you can just extrapolate from there how difficult it's going to be for them to get themselves together to run the country. But they're going to run us into the ditch. Social Security is going to take a hit. Uh, every social program that it is, that's a little benefit. Uh, to the poor uh, is going to take a hit and uh, all of the findings of the January 6th committee are going to be invalidated, invidiated, I have a, a term you may uh, choose to uh, uh, apply to that. In other words, the, the whole year's work of that January 6th committee with all of its findings is going to be tossed out because the Republicans, the GOP, is in charge of the House of Representatives. And uh, when you got a thief in the hen house, you can't go to sleep until you get that thief out the hen house. And uh, the GOP in the Congress right now, whether it's Matt Gates or, or uh, what's her name? Uh, Miss Green? Yeah. I can't think of her first name right now. It slips my mind, but you know what I'm talking about. Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, uh, Laura Lobert and all of that ilk, they don't mean the country any good. They are not going to be good for the United States of America. You can put that down. The Reverend Martin said uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and the Republicans are going to be bad news for democracy. Mark my word. Uh, because if they were sympathizers with those people who were actively, uh, put, uh, violently trying to uh, invade the uh, uh, Capitol as, they, as we celebrated, as uh, President Biden and the Democrats celebrated uh, in solemn memorial today, second year anniversary, uh, then what kind of laws do you think they're going to pass? See, anything that would help the, the nation to go forward, they're going to be against it because they want, they don't want uh, to be seen to uh, help uh, Joe Biden to further his economic program. So they're going to do stumbling. They're going to throw stumbling blocks and all kind of roadblocks uh, in the next two years going coming up on the 2024 uh, election. And uh, my chief... Uh, uh, my chief point, aim, is that we will get to reparation. Now, we had reparation discussion uh, during the campaigns uh, leading up to the election of Donald Trump. And uh, we had uh, uh, reparation uh, discussion uh, leading up to uh, now. And, but uh, it's going to be far more difficult to get reparation uh, discussions going on in the uh, House of Representatives and in the Senate uh, because of the presence of these uh, radical reactionaries uh, in the Republican Party. And uh, while we're talking about the Republican Party and their uh, speakership, uh, this is going to be the 14th ballot tonight at uh, 10 p.m. Central Time. But uh, lest we be uh, misled, this is not anything new. Uh, back in 1855, it says that it was a, 
133 ballots were cast. In other words, it took 133 times before they chose the Speaker of the House. And that was, uh, and because the basic issue was uh, the issue of uh, abolitionism of slavery. And the fellow that became the Speaker of the House at that time was Nathaniel Banks, and he was an abolitionist. And there were 21 people running for that uh, candidate for Speaker of the House. So no one had took 133 ballots before they could got down to a speaker. And then in 1855, uh, and before that rather, in 1923, uh, a guy named Frederick H. Gillette, who was like all, also a Republican from Massachusetts. Uh, let me see, they took... Uh, I think they took nine ballots, nine ballots before they could elect this fellow. And uh, so you can see that there is no, if there is a, uh, this has happened before, but like I said, uh, this is 114 times uh, uh, here in 2022. But in 1855, it took a total of 133 times before uh, they could choose a speaker of the house. So uh, history repeats itself. And of course, those issues then was the treatment of the poor. And the issue now is the treatment of the poor. So the more things change, the more they remain the same. And the only thing uh, consistently uh, uh, unchangeable is that the rich keep throwing uh, roadblocks in, in, the, in the pathways of those that would alleviate the suffering of the less fortunate, the poor and less fortunate of our nation. So we are in for a rough ride either way it goes. Uh, you got the uh, cases before the Supreme Court about the gerrymandering and uh, the redistricting uh, in the uh, states and, uh, and all of that, the bottom of the, the underlying uh, cause or reason of that is that uh, gerrymandering hurts the poor. Uh, and the poorest of the poor are the blacks. And so we get hurt the, uh, the most and the worst. Uh, don't have any doubts about it. This is a systemic thing. Uh, a man may, uh, may be a man or a woman. They may smile in your face. But they are doing the bidding of the system. Uh, when they get in the office, they, they are not their own person. They do the bidding of the system. Uh, this is a collective. And the individual... Uh, is subsumed on the the, uh, the needs and the desires and the money of the collective. If you don't believe me, ask uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, John Ro Chief Justice John Roberts. Uh, he and uh, uh, his uh, conservatives on the Supreme Court, that's their principal rulings are, are against the poor and their pro-business and uh, that is is that it's uh, a uh, you can't negotiate with terrorists and, and and right now in the congress you have terrorists running the congress running the gop and you have terrorists running the supreme court and uh we are in a terrible uh situation that causes us to crawl out to cry out to god uh, as I said on on last uh, week, which was uh, coming up on uh, New Year's, and uh, now we are in the New Year, and I think this is the first. This is my first broadcast of 2023. Hallelujah! And so, uh, but you can see the the way things are going and the way things uh, are looking. Uh, we must uh, do what. The uh, Bible says we must constantly pray 
because and not faint because uh, these Republicans ain't gonna let up on you, uh, no way, shape, or form. Now they're praying too. I saw them praying this morning, but they're not praying the prayer I'm praying. <laughs> so keep your powder dry. Uh, and don't uh, be not weary in well doing, in spite of of uh, my dire uh, pronouncements. All right. Uh, we have the uh, we still have the problem that police are killing uh, more people now than they did two years ago. Since George Floyd, uh, the police uh, killed one thousand one hundred and seventy six people. And uh, uh, the majority of those killings were black. And uh, as I started out in the in the opening uh, of this broadcast, as I, my same lament is that uh, the disparity between a black man with a knife and a white man with a knife. Now, white man, I, I use the example of this fellow who killed these four women, killed three women and one man in Idaho. But yet he was arrested without incident, not a scratch on him, no brutalization and all of that. But uh, a, a, a black person who may just be a suspicion that he may have a knife is killed. And so uh, that is a great disparity uh, that is, you cannot ignore. You can't overlook it. Uh, you have to look right at it and call it what it is, a disparity based upon race, uh, based upon the devaluing of a black skin and the overvaluing of a, a, uh, a, a person who is considered so-called white. Remember, there is no such thing as a race occurring in nature. Race is a, racism, is, as it is, is a social construct. It doesn't exist in nature. All life did not begin in Europe. All life began in Africa. And it spread across the world uh, to all of it where it is uh, now. With uh, uh, I used to read uh, the philosopher Hegel, and I thought he was a very learned man. But then I come to find out he was not as learned as I thought he was, because he said Africa contributed nothing to the world, and yet you find that the Sphinx, the pyramid, the uh, uh, the alphabet, literature, higher and lower mathematics, all of these were started in on the continent of Africa. In fact, uh, you, Egypt itself was on the continent, was in the continent of Africa until the European cartographers uh, uh, separated it. And whoever draws the map uh, is the one who does the discovery. And until, as they say, until the uh, the lion uh, has a, a, a historian. The, the hunter will always be a, a hero. And so that is our first, uh, this is our first uh, broadcast of uh, 2023. And uh, I want to thank God for you and uh, pray your blessing, pray God's blessing upon you uh, as we go into this uh, new year. And uh, don't forget, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And uh, please believe me, uh, this sin is the cause of it all. But it is systemic, it is endemic, institutionalized, and it affects every aspect of my life and your life. Uh, some of us uh, have the uh, mistaken Im uh, impression that we are inferior. The others of us have the mistaken impression that we are superior. Both in, uh, perspectives are incorrect. As I close, as I get out of here, remember, I've always worked in my life, but if you're working for somebody and they don't want to pay you, take my advice. Don't work for them. Thank you, Doc. Love you. Gonna have a good time this year. Don't stop praying.